My name is Craig and today I'm going to be taking you through how to remove backgrounds on photographs in Photoshop. Um, it's quite a common, it, it's a really common thing that people want to do in Photoshop but there isn't very many things out there that, that really show you the different techniques that's used to do it. Um, so what I'm going to do in this tutorial is take you through how I do it um, and show you how to do it in, in a non-destructive manner which means you save you, you potentially save yourself time at a later date if, if you want to undo whatever it is that you've done um so yeah basically to start off i usually use the pen tool which is this little fella here there we go um and the pen tool basically if you don't already know works just by creating a series of anchor points to create a shape which um you can then use to manipulate the image um at a, at a later sort of point um, and to do this, uh, there is a there is a, an option called the uh, rubber band, which is in here. Um, if you don't have the rubber band on, um, you can't see where your next tank up, like what the line's gonna do until you actually drop it down. With the rubber band tool on, you can see exactly where the next line's gonna go before you actually before you actually deploy it. Um, and and that is helpful because you know if it, if it's not quite right, you can sort of change it before you sort of drop it down which does save some time um another thing is if you're not familiar with the pen tool um is the ability to manipulate the handles so for example if you just click you're not going to get any handles you just get a point and if you click again you get another point but if you click and hold down and drag you get handles which manipulates the line now these two handles can be manipulated by holding the option key or the alt key and um, if you hold the alt key in you can actually manipulate the previous handle which is going to affect the curve you've already drawn um, or you can manipulate the new handle which is going to affect the one you're about to draw so if i put this underneath this you can see that that curves quite tight but if i drag this out it'll it'll stretch further or if i drag it in or up or whatever it'll change the profile of the next next line um, and this is really helpful when you when you're trying to select the background of an image and um, you can also remove the leading one completely so say I wanted to say say I've got to this point and I wanted to now go straight down from this point with this handle here this isn't gonna work it's gonna it's gonna keep that that curve there so if you hold the option key in and click the last anchor point it'll actually remove the handle so you can draw your line straight down uh, these are the things that you're going to need really to um to do this next point but but there isn't there isn't a lot to it other than other than them it's just controlling these handles controlling your anchor points and and trying to make it as tidy as possible when you've finished your path collecting connecting it to the first dot will then create your shape which you can then use to manipulate the background um, Right, so basically what you want to do is just go around your image, just pick a point to start at and go around it and, and you want to zoom in close and there's like a, a pixel line which bleeds on a JPEG image usually. Um, it, there's like a definite bleed between objects. So as you can see, you've got the this highlight line and then you've got the gray, but in between you've got this, this bleed where the in the compression it doesn't really know what's what and it kind of merges the two together it's like a blur you want to avoid this blur when you cut now your background because if you see you draw your anger points down here this blur is gonna it's gonna affect your image it's gonna have this edge and and you want to try and avoid that so when i'm removing backgrounds they tend to come in a pixel or so and collect connect onto the solid points of the image so you're going to want to go down and, and cut that blur out it doesn't matter if you knock a few pixels off your your image because nobody's going to really know but it, you will be able to tell if you hit that bleed so as you can see here i'm drawing the points inside of the bleed lines so i'm i'm not picking up anything where it's it's potentially blurred it's just sort of if, if you're unsure just come in a few pixels and make sure that you get the solid line again we're just going to like here for example this is a typical example of where i don't want the handle because i want to go down here so i'm going to just remove that out and continue on and i mean you don't have to be this accurate with it i like to take the time with this point because the more accurate you are with this the better the finish you'll get at the end but if you 
can't be bothered to, to you know, do it to this level of detail. You don't have to. You, you could zoom out and, and sort of cover bigger areas. Um, but again, it just it reflects in the quality at the end. So if you can take the time with it, you do have the patience. It is worth it. Um, but yeah, if you if you if you'd rather do bigger sections to get through it quicker, you can of course do that as well. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go all the way around this image, and I'm going to actually speed this part of the video up, but you'll still be able to see what I'm doing. It's basically just clicking and dragging, clicking and dragging. And just making sure that those anchor points cover the the contours of the image as best as, as you possibly can get them. Um, my laptop sounds like it's about to take off as well, so apologies for that if you hear that in the video. Um, fans are working in overtime. Okay, so here we are, back to the beginning. I'm just about to connect this last dot up. Um, we've went all the way around the outside. Um, I will have speeded this bit up, so um, hopefully it shouldn't have took too long because it's probably took about 10 minutes to do the whole thing. Um, basically what I'm going to do is just connect this last dot up, which then completes the profile. Now we've got all of the dots going around the outside, um, which you can see here. And then what you're going to do is, we've got this work path. If you can't see this window, you can find it under window and then paths. This will bring this up. And, and this is what you want to control all of these dots. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this tool, which um, is the load path of selection tool. And what this is going to do is put the march and ants around the image that you've cut out. Um, mine's highlighted the, the whole background. Yours might have highlighted just the the inside like this. Um, whichever way it, it's done, um, it, if you want to flip it, you can just go to select and then go to inverse selection, uh, which is here. Select inverse, which is uh, going to select either the background. The, the difference between these is, as you can see, this one with it going around the outside of the background, um, that's actually controlling the background itself. Um, if I inverse it um, and delete, now it's actually it, it's leaving the background there. Um, we want it on this setting without the background, which seems strange, but um, it's for the next part. We want to go to select and then refine edge. And because we've got this inside layer selected you can actually see what it'll look like when you remove the background if it was the other way around you would have the background with like the character would be missing or Ronaldo in this instance would be missing and, it, and it, you wouldn't get the the feel for it so in this refine edge panel we can see exactly what it'll look like once the background's cut out and you can actually change the view so if I if I want to see it on white or um, if I want to see it you know if I had another layer underneath I could test it beforehand um should have probably had notifications off that's my girlfriend asking if we can get a dog um so <laughs> yeah uh so yeah i tend to do it on black if it's a light image and on white if it's a dark image as you can see the white of his kit is clashing with the background so i'm going to do it on a black background and um you can just test the edges here and, and you can um you know you can see what exactly it'll look like and you can bring if if you're if you have hit that blur a little bit you can shift the edge so you can either shift it in or you can shift it out slightly you might not be able to see the difference that much but it does tend to give it a, a raggy edge which is why i try and take me time going around the outside rather than trying to 
to fudge it later with the tools. Um, and usually what I do is I just add a one a one pixel smooth to it. Um, that's pretty much all I do. I mean, you can do, you can feather where it'll blur the edges. Um, you know, you can make them harsher or softer, but if you get your selection right, this one pixel smooth is probably all you will need to get a professional sort of finish. Um, and yeah, so you just click OK, it's going to go back to how it was. And uh, now you're going to remove the background. And what we're going to do is we're going to do it with a layer mask. And this is this button here. Add to layer mask. And what, what this is going to do is it's deleted the background, but it hasn't deleted it entirely, if that makes sense. The background's still there. It's just being hidden rather than deleted. So the difference is, is if, if I had of if let's just put this layer back sorry uh, delete layer mask. so if i've got this layer and i highlighted that and i deleted the background that background's gone now so once i go through my history and i want to and i want to just you know put some of the background back in if i'd messed something up um i couldn't do that because it's it's a destructive way of taking the background out. like that background has literally been deleted i can't get it back with a layer mask what it does is it, it gives you this black and white image and the black and white image represents the black hides and the white shows so if i was to just take a brush tool and paint white onto this this black and white you can if you select that that'll you know affect the actual image but if you make sure that this white edge is on the layer mask you can just draw if i draw white onto it you'll see the background start to come back in and and that means that what you can do is at a later date if you needed it back for whatever reason it's still there and you should always use the mask to wherever possible in photoshop Um, deleting things forever is never really a good idea um because you you never know as your design goes on if you if you want it back and then it means you have to go back and cut this whole image out again Um. so yeah and what i have noticed as well is there's a gap between his legs here which is not being cut out so what you want to do again is just do the same thing as you did before with the pen tool and it's just doing the same thing and it's always in it's always a good idea to make sure you check your images for these because you wouldn't believe the amount of images where you see the backgrounds being cut out but there's actually um gaps under the arms or between the legs where this sort of thing still shows the original background and it does ruin the finish of the image so you're better off just making sure you you double check before you sort of finish it off so i'm just going to go around and cut them out and it's the same thing as before highlight it um, inverse it if you have to, refine edge, one pixel, I think I've inversed that one, I wasn't supposed to, Have I? no that's good, so now I'm just going to fill it with black, so that's different to how we did it before, because we actually added the layer mask, but now that the layer mask is already here, we're going to fill it with black, so you can do this just by flipping these to so you've got black as the background color and you hold command and press backspace and it's just going to fill it in there which takes it out and again because it's done on the layer mask if you wanted to draw it back in at a later date it is still there whenever i find out where the there you go so yeah so that's pretty much it we've removed that background now um and if you were to put your new background underneath, you can pretty much put them on any any background that you wanted now. And it's all cut out. That is the way that I would recommend doing background removal. Uh, there is a few other techniques. Um, you can use the, the brush tool or the lasso tool or um, even just an eraser but i find this gets the most professional result um and, and it's it's the one that i use so i hope that was helpful and um, if you have any questions or comments then you know leave them in the bottom and i'll, I'll try and reply to them as, as soon as i can 
Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you for your time, and uh, I'll go through a few different techniques in in another video because this one's getting on a bit long. So, um, thank you very much. See you later.